Okay, there we go. We're back now. Sorry about that. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, right? So right up there on the board, the number one thing up there on my board is my five, right? That's my list of people who I am intentional about building relationships with, right? So the stump the coach question, I believe, here was, how do I create foundational relationships that will hold up my success? Number one, don't look for people to hold you up. Look for people to pull you along. Right? Yes, you can have some support to, to hold you up, um, but you also need people to pull you along. Number two, be intentional about it. It's not going to happen by accident. Reach out to them. They can be people that you don't know. They can be uh, people who have been mentors from afar. I'm all just all kinds of things are dinging and going here. Um, but be intentional about who they are and be intentional about spending time with them. It's not going to, you're not going to do it. You're not going to build relationships without spending time with them. So you have to do that. Hey, David, good morning to you, sir. Yeah, yeah, I know that, Catherine. I can't edit what I don't write. Why in general do negative thoughts have more power in the brain than positive ones? We can eat away in a way positive ones. Oh, they can eat away in a way that positive ones don't. Positive ones need to be drilled in there. So great question, Keith. I I think the negative thoughts occupy more space because we let them. Right. I mean, we we have a choice. I I know for me, I'll just speak from my personal experience uh, at this point. I have a tendency to go back to past setbacks. Right. If I'm trying something new and it doesn't work out like, yeah, see, this is just like last time I can predict what's going to happen. So I'm just not going to do that. Right. So we I, I. And I think we, in general, have a tendency to fall back on those past experiences, right? Now, we do have the ability to think about future bad experiences, right? I mean, we can make up worst-case scenarios, but, but typically those bad thoughts, the negative thoughts and feelings are the ones from the past, right? So here's a good tip on how to deal with those. Rather than remembering how painful a particular situation was, like, man, that was painful. I don't want to go through that again. I just won't, I won't take that risk. Exam, I mean, claim it for what it is. Yes, that was a painful experience. What can I do to avoid that next time? Or what did I learn from that that I can apply the next time I'm, I'm going down that path? Right. So you, you kind of flip the frame on that negative experience. If it's a negative experience in your life, it's your history. It's not going to change. It's always going to be there. There's no reason to go back and relive it over and over and over again. Not going to change. Right. So let's find a way to learn from it. Wow, that was really bad. What can I take away from that? And the takeaway from that, right, should be positive. It should be something that we can apply to the future that's going to give us a positive outcome. It's my thought anyway. Great question. Thanks for that. Yes, I can write for five minutes, Catherine. Hey, Kristen, good morning. Uh, so Joe says your internal editor writes a negative in order to eliminate the pain that you experience. See, I don't believe that it's trying to eliminate the pain. I think it's trying to reinforce it. See, our brain, uh, the, the history of our brain is that its job is to keep us safe. Right? So that's why the very first, um, very first reaction I mean, think about it this way. If you're walking across the parking lot and you hear a loud bang, right? Your instant reaction is danger, right? That's, that's the, the brain stem, the lizard brain, the monkey brain, whatever you want to call it. That is, that's fight or flight, right? 
and the, the instantly your very first response is danger. Then you turn to look and see what it is, and your neocortex, the new part of your brain, can apply meaning to the sound. Ah, oh, that was just a backfire. That's okay. Right? We have a tendency to go to those negative places to remind us of the danger to prevent us from doing it again. That's the, that's the, the old part, the brain stem, the fight or flight part of our brain that's trying to protect us from danger. And we have to override that with the meaning that we apply from our neocortex, the new part of our brain, that can think critically and say, no, it's not going to be like that again. I mean, that, that, this kind of plays out in herd mentality also, right? Where you see a big herd of, you know, like on Wild Kingdom. I don't even know if that show's still on or not. Big herd of gazelles, lions coming up on, on one side, so the whole herd starts moving. Well, the gazelles on this side don't know there's a lion. They just know everybody else is running, so I need to run, right? They, they can't override that fight or flight system. We, on the other hand, have this part of our brain that allows us to override it. So I, I think that, um, that's why I think we keep going back to the negative, right? So what we have to do, just like any other, any other muscle, any other, uh, habit, we're, we're going to go there. Our brain is going to take us there. It's going to create the trigger, right? So remember, triggers happen. You get a flat tire. You hear a loud bang. The trigger's going to happen. There's nothing we can do to change that. Then we assign meaning to it. Then we find the emotion that's associated with that meaning, right? So assigning the meaning is up to us. That's We have a choice, and we have to practice doing that. Man, I really hated, you know, losing all that money. How can I not do that again, right? Yeah, and uh, and I agree with you, Kristen. At some point, these become self-fulfilling prophecies. If I believe that I'm not going to be successful, then I don't take the actions that successful people take. Then I am not successful. Hence, a self-fulfilling prophecy. The flip side of that works also. Oh yeah, I can do this. Look at how I mean. As I talked about yesterday. Look at all this stuff I've done already. I can do this, and then just magically it gets done, right? Even though the negative part of our brain, yeah, even though the negative part of our brain is is trying to be a negative Nancy. Yes, think about good experiences. 17 minutes. <laughs> well, <clears throat> yeah, I've run a little long this morning. But, hey, thanks so much. These were great questions. Uh, I, I enjoy this. This is, uh, this is a good part of doing what I do. Well, and I've got to make up for Monday since I'm going to take a holiday day on Monday. So extra long show today. I hope that some of this has been helpful. If it has been helpful and only if it has been helpful for you, hit the thumbs up. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get notifications when I go live. If you're watching on Facebook, be sure to subscribe. That way Facebook will do its job, let you know every morning when I go live. All right. You guys have a great weekend and a safe weekend. <clears throat> I will be back Tuesday morning uh, with another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Until then, you guys have a great time. <laughs>